Showing on Law Weekly today the legal controversies surrounding the Undo State PDP governorship candidacy. We talked to legal practitioner Mr. G.T. Ogunye. We also have lawyers speaking about the legal implications surrounding the delay in the confirmation of EFCC's acting chairman Ibrahim Magu, plus our usual recap of the top trend in legal stories. Hello and welcome to the program. I am Shola Shiyeli. The Undo state governorship elections and its attendant crisis surrounding the candidacy of the major political parties has once again demonstrated how vulnerable the judiciary is to political influence. In this next report, we look at the twists and turns and how the courts got entangled in the whole process. The Ondo state governorship election will go down in the history of the state and perhaps the country as one of the most controversial elections owing to the confusion and considerable uncertainty over who should fly the flag of the three main political parties in the poll. That's talking about the People's Democratic Party, PDP, or Progressive Congress, APC, and Alliance for Democracy, AD. All it takes people to triumph is for good people to keep quiet. While the candidate of the AD, Olushala Oke, was able to resolve and settle out of court the dispute that arose from his emergence with aggrieved members of his party, this was not the case with the PDP candidate, Eitayo Jegede, and that of the APC, Rotimi Akiredulu. Though the case between Dr. Shegun Abraham, who lost the primary elections to Mr. Akiredulu, is still unresolved, the APC candidate, however, had the backing of his party unlike the PDP candidate, whose party remains divided going into the elections. The legal battle between Jagere, who belongs to the Senator Ahmed Makafi faction, and businessman Barista Jimo Ibrahim, who belongs to the Alimodu Sheri faction, has now shifted to the Supreme Court, and the court is expected to sit over six appeals filed on the matter. The PDP leadership crisis, which snowballed into the Ondo State PDP governorship tussle, started over a year ago, and it has put enormous pressure on the judiciary, one of the consequences of which is the conflicting judgments being churned out by judges on the same level in the judicial hierarchy. Within a period of three months, between the 12th of May and the 17th of August, the electoral umpire, INEC, received 11 different rulings and judgments, all from courts of coordinate jurisdictions in Abuja, Lagos, and Port Harcourt. There are many other injunctions and ex parte orders obtained by the warring factions across the country. The two warring camps presented different names to INEC as flag bearers of the party for the Undo polls. While the McAfee primaries, monitored by INEC, saw to the emergence of former Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice, Eitayo Jagede, SAN, the sheriff camp, whose primaries was initially stopped by an Akure High Court, produced Jimo Ibrahim as its candidate. The crisis became worse when INEC later released a list of 28 candidates for the election. Ibrahim was not recognized, while Jagede made the list as PDP candidate. In a swift reaction to the development, some party members loyal to the sheriff faction kicked against the choice of Jagere as the party's candidate, saying that INEC was biased. Subsequently, the factional chairman and secretary of the party in the states, Mr. B. Kuroye, and one Ademola Genti, approached the Abuja division of the Federal High Court. In a judgment delivered on June the 29th, Justice Okun Abang ordered INEC to only accept the name of the candidate sent by the Puroye executive as the actual candidate of the party for future elections. After this order, and to stop INEC from naming Ibrahim as the PDP candidate, two other ex parte orders were issued by different judges from the Odo State High Court, restraining INEC from replacing the name of Jagede with that of Ibrahim. Faced with so many conflicting orders, INEC decided to obey Justice Abang's order. This development caused Mr. Jagede to approach the Court of Appeal to settle the matter. He contended that the ruling does not in any way affect the matter of the PDP candidacy in the Undo State governorship election because the issue of the primaries was not the matter before Justice Abang. The appeal court in a judgment on Wednesday, November 24, agreed with Jagede and in a lead judgment read by Justice Ibrahim Saulawa, he confirmed that the lower court erred when it replaced the Itai or Jagede with Jimo Ibrahim. The court also nullified the primary election that produced Mr. Jimo Ibrahim, describing it as an illegal contraption. 
INEC has since obeyed the appeal court by replacing Ibrahim's name with that of Jagede. But the crisis is far from over, especially if the candidate of the PDP wins the Undo state governorship elections. The Supreme Court would still have to rule one way or the other on the very contentious issue of who is the authentic candidate of the former ruling party. There's no doubt that the courts are not yet done with the matter, but to take a deeper look at the issues involved, I sat down with legal practitioner J.T. Oguye. I began by asking him what can be done in future to prevent this kind of spectacle the courts were subjected to. There are no easy ways in this kind of jurisdiction to insulate the judiciary from being dragged unwittingly uh, into the political processes in the country, particularly uh, pre-election disputes and post-election uh, petition resolution. And the reason is obvious. Uh, in a climate where there is so much premium on political power acquisition and deployment, in a way that promotes primitive accumulation of resources. Uh, all means, foul and fair, will be employed to capture that power. And so if the pursuit of that power uh, goes to the judiciary, the judiciary uh, will be turned into a tough of very virulent disputation by partisans. Uh, for too long, there was an assumption that certain political parties are the parties that can guarantee one's access to power. I mean, when the 